Hello, and today we will be doing an install of Ubuntu onto a VMware instance. So if you need to know what VMware is, go ahead and look at the comments below and there will be a video to uh, uh, VMware. Um, basically what Ubuntu is, is a free Linux OS. Uh, it's very widely used both for individuals and for commercial use. It's one of those, it's just another one of those very powerful Linux OS's, kind of like CentOS. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the download section. And right here, you notice that there's two versions of it. And they're basically uh, both the same thing. It's just that the desktop version has the front-end GUI applications, and the server version does not. And it might actually contain uh, some server uh, applications that you might need over here in the desktop. So really, you can make the desktop version have everything the server version has, and vice versa. So the server version can have everything the desktop version. So for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and download the desktop version because it does have that nice GUI front end. And um, we'll take a moment to actually review the uh, GUI front end. I'm going to download the 64-bit version. And then you just click Start Download. And it'll start downloading right down here. It's about 700 megs. I've already uh, downloaded this, so I'll go ahead and cancel it. And uh, we'll start with the installation. So once you boot into VMware, you get a window similar to this. Go ahead and hit click Create New. Continue without disk. And we'll select our disk image. So we'll select the disk image. Hit Open. Continue. So it'll say Ubuntu 64-bit. Go ahead and put in your password. This will be your root password or your super user password, so you definitely want one. I'm going to unselect this because I don't need the home folder except accessible to my virtual machine. And again, I won't need these tools. I prefer to have my VMware isolated from uh, my desktop that I'm currently running. So continue without tools. I am going to customize the instance. So I will just name this Ubuntu YouTube. Hit save. It already exists. So there we go. And the only thing that I'm going to change is that I'm going to add two gigs of RAM and I'll give it another core. Other than that, uh, you can leave everything at defaults. And then you can go ahead and start the install. One of the nice things about Ubuntu is that they have made this pretty much the, uh, once you start the install, It'll do everything by itself. That was probably the last user command that I need to do before um, it actually finishes installing and I can log in. So I'm just going to wait for this to uh, get to the uh, install screen just so that I can talk about the install screen a little bit and then we'll go into our review. So you can already tell that even in uh, going to the install screen, some of the desktop items have already started showing up. Uh, this is one of those uh, installations in which you definitely want you to have a network connection working because it will be downloading files from the uh, from their servers and uh, I'm pretty sure that if you don't have a uh, internet connection it will still down uh, it'll still complete installing but you will not have the latest files so during this install you can actually uh, select this button and you can kind of go through to, uh, to see what uh, Ubuntu desktop has to offer. But um, this is just something that uh, you can do. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and uh, wait for this to uh, complete. And we are back. Uh, the installation is about to finish. Um, just before the installation is uh, done, there is a reboot that happens. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and log in. So before we actually go into the review of uh, the desktop, let me go ahead and change the resolution. It 
enough. Okay, so I guess the uh, first thing we should cover is that uh, you'll see that this is a uh, uh, full screen mode right now. And in order to close this, you have to actually come up to the top of this, uh, uh, I guess, this uh, bar, uh, navigation bar up top to be actually see the close icon. Otherwise, you don't see it. It actually takes a little bit of getting used to. So you can go ahead and close that out. And we'll just uh, start over here on the right so right over here is your standard uh, commands that you would need uh, system commands and then it'll tell you what user you're logged in as time your volume uh, this is your network settings and it's kinda nice that you can get all of your uh, connection information right here so if you need to know your IP address uh, you can just get it from here uh, this has integration to both Facebook and Twitter so if you're into that kind of thing, uh, it's kind of nice. And if you may have noticed that uh, down here, this icon started twitching. And that's because uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, updates that we need to apply to this install. And um, I guess this would probably be, be the primary reason why there's a desktop version and uh, there's a server version is because, you know, with this nice slick GUI, you're going to have to uh, keep it up to date. As you can see, there's 138 megs worth of downloads to have to go through. But with a server version, since uh, there is no GUI front end, everything is a command line, you don't have to go through the uh, trouble of having to do this. So we'll go ahead and uh, start the uh, download. And also in the command line, you can also look for updates right here. But uh, the, we might as well cover this part first then is the uh, this workspace icon and this is probably one of the neater things of Ubuntu is that when you select this you get four uh, desktop spaces that you can switch to so I can automatically switch to this one and now I have free space to do other things like if I wanted to start Firefox which is the uh, default browser and again in order to close Firefox you need to come up to this navigation bar up top to close it but at any time I can hit this, come back over, and check for uh, how long the uh, updates has to go. So that's just uh, one of the nice features to it. Alright, let me close this out. Right up top here is the dash home. So this would be where you can search for applications. Although I'm not sure why there isn't one in which it just shows you all of your applications. There's one for video, one for audio, one for folders. This one shows you the recent just installed and uh, available downloads, but there isn't one in which it just shows all of them. Like for instance, uh, since this is a Linux OS, the terminal is still very, very much used to uh, install software. So I would recommend you just go ahead and type in terminal and drag terminal to your, uh, I guess your left uh, action bar, I guess. And then go ahead and close that out. So anybody who's used to Linux, this is the st standard command prompt that uh, you would use. So the home folder, uh, if you come from a Windows background, this probably look very familiar to you. And then they have their own suite of Office uh, products, Ubuntu software. Uh, so this is basically their version of like the Android Play or the uh, Apple App Store. So you can download apps. It's a pretty nice slick uh, system settings, kind of self-explanatory. Ubuntu One. So this is uh, Ubuntu's version of uh, Dropbox. Or I'm, I'm not sure which one, uh, what Microsoft calls theirs, but basically you can sign up and get five gigs of uh, free cloud space. So that's kind of neat. And really, that's it for pretty much the, the base install. It is fairly slick, and uh, I actually really like this as a uh, desktop for uh, a Linux OS, and it's uh, something that I'll probably uh, end up playing more with and maybe doing a few more videos on that. But uh, that'll be the end of this video review. Thank you for watching.